The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, hello, everyone. This is Dennis Kay with Belize Islands Real Estate on the beautiful island of Ambergris Key, Belize. It's just about 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, so I'd like to welcome all of you who could make the webinar today. I really appreciate you attending. And we're just going to give everybody about one more minute to uh, log on. Sometimes there's little issues with uh, downloading apps, rebooting computers. So I'd like to give everybody just a minute or two before we officially begin. So first of all, if you would, uh, please give me the uh, courtesy of giving me a sound and slide check. If you can see my face with my name on the opening screen and hear my voice okay, could you please type in yes in the questions box or uh, in, the, uh, in the chat? And if you can do that, I can make sure I'm being heard okay. And uh, we know we can go through this webinar, hopefully without any problems. All right, thanks a lot, Randy, really appreciate that. So uh, let's see here, we're gonna have a good time today. I've been doing a ton of research uh, regarding different market drivers and KPIs that are affecting the Ambergris Key real estate market. And I'm gonna drive down pretty deep into each of these and I'm gonna show uh, a couple of different real estate uh, buying opportunities at the very end. You can stick around and look at those if you'd like. If not, no problem. Um, what I want you to do basically here is just to get a good education as to what is the latest and greatest information coming out of Belize. So first of all, just to help me out, I'm going to launch a very brief poll. This is just so I know how to tailor the information in these webinars to meet the needs of my attendees. So please just pick one of these. If you're a, a, a client who already owns property on the island, or if you receive my regular newsletter that I try to send out once a week, a couple times a month at the, at the least, or if you saw my post or my advertising on different social media, such as Google AdWords or Facebook, things like this, and you're here just attending for the first time. And what I'll do with this information is uh, after I compile it for a few weeks, I sort of adjust the content and length and scope of my webinars to really make sure I'm reaching my target audience in a, in a good way. So I'm just going to close out that poll here and just share it with you because I think it's interesting for you to know uh, who's also attending the webinar today. So 50% of you already own property. That's not surprising. Uh, and then 25% receive my newsletter and 25% uh, of you are here uh, from the Facebook. So very, very good. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right. So let's get into it. Uh, my wife and I moved from Michigan uh, to the country of Belize back in 2003. We lived on the mainland and then spent nine years on the island of Ambergris Key, Belize. I had a beautiful life there. In fact, I was able to be involved with uh, various real estate projects and TV shows, uh, one of which was House Hunters International. That was really cool to film. And then I filmed several episodes for HGTV in their new series called Live Here by This, where I showed properties on Ambergris Key and Key Cocker and even parts of the mainland and the jungles, which was absolutely fantastic. And through these means, I got a lot of exposure and have had tremendous success uh, investing myself in the market on Ambergris Key. And what I'd like to do in this webinar is to take a good hard look at the numbers. I plan on doing these investor series at least once a month to give my current uh, property owners some new information regarding wh wh how their properties are doing, uh, what sort of trends we see, and what we expect the future to be like 12, uh, 24 months out, 5, 10 years, looking at the, the big picture. So what I'm going to focus in on is how to capitalize on the coming wave of activity that uh, is going to be happening on the island of Ambergris Key. Now to begin, I'm going to talk a little bit about Amazon. Now, why would I be talking about Amazon? Well, it's very interesting what's happening with Amazon. They're looking at building a headquarters, headquarters uh, 2.0. And this is absolutely uh, going to be amazing for one city in the United States. We don't know which city that is yet, but uh, Amazon is building a full-fledged headquarters. They just put out their RFP, the request for proposal back in you know, just about three, three and a half months ago. And wherever they land, whatever they city they land in to do this massive project, they're projecting to create 50,000 jobs, which is with an annual salary of 100,000 per job, which is $5 billion per year. Plus, they plan on generating another $5 billion in capital investment. Now, that's a lot of economic activity crammed into one city. Now, granted, these cities are already of substantial size. Uh, cities in the running could be cities like Denver, Austin, Tampa, Atlanta, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. So they already have a booming economy in several different uh pieces of the, of the puzzle make it so, make those valuable destinations. But if Amazon chooses one of those countries, think about the effect it would have on the real estate market 
in one of those cities. Think about how many additional jobs will be created. For example, Amazon boasts that it has been a catalyst for development in downtown Seattle with an abundance of new restaurants, services, cafes, coffee shops. So you can imagine if they choose Denver or Washington or Baltimore as their city where they're going to be building this next HQ2 in, think about the impact that would have on all of those primary, secondary, and tertiary jobs, but also also on the real estate market. So it's interesting as a real estate investor to take a look at what the what the move or not move really, but what what the uh, what it would mean for Amazon to move into one of these hubs and anytime you have this much activity, economic activity pointed at a single market, there is going to be a lot of activity. Now you may be saying, Dennis, okay, I understand, but what in the world does that, that have to do with Belize? Well, actually, quite a bit. We're going to see why. We're going to focus in now on eight key market drivers and KPIs or key performance indicators as it relates directly to current Ambergris key property holders and those looking to get in and on the investment game very soon. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the 2017 tourism statistics. Now, what do these tell us about what's happening on the island? Well, recently, over 2,000 passenger seats per week have been added by the various airlines servicing Belize from the United States and Canada. 2,000 extra seats per week, and we've seen the effect in that in their overnight arrivals. From January uh, 2017, uh, to now, September 2016, these are the latest numbers that we have, we've seen a market increase in the number of overnight arrivals. So if you look on this chart, it shows you two things. First of all, on the left-hand side, the numbers for 2016 as compared to 2015. Now look very carefully at those columns. For instance, January 2016, there was a 24% increase and the number of overnight arrivals to the country Belize. In February, 18.5%. In March, 10%. So that last year, we had a 13.0% increase in the number of overnight arrivals to the country of Belize as, as in whole, in general. Now, look at the right-hand side of the column. This shows the percentage of change from 2016 to 2017. Now, notice something interesting in January only a 0.7% increase in tourism. Now, why would that be? Simply because the country was already maxed out. January's our peak month. Everything is sold out. The planes are full, the hotels are full. So there was no more room for growth. So we're so thankful that this year, additional flights started coming in from Toronto, from Calgary, and other hubs are soon to be added to allow uh, more tourists to come in those peak months. Now notice for the first three quarters of 2017, there was a total of 8.6% increase in tourism. And we haven't even gotten to the last three months yet. We expect October, November, and December to bring record numbers. Now, what does this mean? Well, take a look at this. The latest report shows that from January to October of this year, there was a 6.79% increase in overnight arrivals with a total of 341,777 visitors representing over 26,000 more than in the same time last year. And it's key to note that Ambergris Key gets 25% of all visitors to the country. It is the leading tourism destination in Belize. So why is this important for my investors to know? Well, because it's a numbers game. More overnight tourists to Ambergris Key more exposure that the island gets, the more we see interested buyers, the less inventory we have because inventory is being bought up. And then we see appreciation or a rise in real estate values in some areas. And when those start to get tapped out, the opening up of new areas of the island. So very, very significant. Here's a neat slide I just put together. The top destinations in Belize for overnight tourists was number one, not surprising, Ambergris Key. 
over 145,000 the past nine months. Keycocker came in with 112,000. The Cayo District 93 and Placencia came in with 50,000 visitors. So when we look at this, we think, okay, where are the tourists going on vacation? Where are they heading? Where do they like to be? Where are they willing to spend their money, not only as an overnight guest, but also in, in recreational things such as snorkeling, diving, fishing, restaurants, things like this. Obviously, it is the number one island uh, in Belize, Ambergris Key. So this is very significant for us because what we have found in our real estate search and studies is that the the traveler who comes to Ambergris Key tends to be very different than your average vacationer. They normally have their own businesses. They have done quite well and are successful in their lives, at least financially. And they have a higher percentage of wanting to buy in an offshore market like Belize after they have experienced it as a tourist. And they tend to purchase where they stayed in the general area where the resort or hotel was or where they spent memorable time. So places that were, they were able to make memories with their families, their loved ones, their friends, those types of places seem to be key areas where these overnight guests to Belize tend to purchase. So excellent news on the tourism sector. We look forward to what the next uh, three months bring us and see what the final numbers are for 2017. Now let's look at number two, Google search. I guarantee you, or I would think it's a high probability that every single person on today's webinar at one time or another sat down on the computer and in Google typed in Belize real estate. Well, what, how, just what are those numbers telling us? Uh, well, let's take a look at this next slide. We want to look at how many people per month are like us who are typing in Belize real estate or properties in Belize, what locations they're doing this from, and we want to compare that to how many people are actually visiting Belize to come up with some very interesting numbers. So for instance, I just did this yesterday. I went to the websites and you can see, you can get this information from a variety of sources, that the keywords Belize real estate on average is typed in 14,800 times per month. Then you have Belize real estate for sale, uh, homes for sale in Belize, houses for sale in Belize, Ambergris Key real estate. So you see on average, each and every month, thousands of people are typing these keywords, looking for opportunities for real estate in the country. Now, of course, this varies month by month. We see a peak during our high season, which is January, February, March, a little bit of a dip there in May. Summer months, surprisingly, are fairly high, June, July, August a bit. Naturally, it drops down in September, October, because that's uh, typically, you know, kids go back to school. That's a busy month, and uh, Belize typically gets it's less tourist in those months, uh, but then it pops right back up and of November, beginning of December. Now, along with that, we take a look and see the real estate websites, what sort of traffic they're getting. So for example, I just picked out three here, Century 21, uh, the Belize Real Estate uh, Group, a small group of uh, um, cooperative brokers on the island, and also uh, Remax's website, Belize Real Estate Search. And you can see in the right-hand column, there are about uh, 1,000 visiting Century 21, 725, the MLS, uh, Group MLS, and about uh, 562, uh, the Remax site there. So on average, uh, these are just three of the sites out of dozens that are getting a high amount of traffic from unique visitors. So now, what does all this mean? Well, take a look at this slide. In the past nine months, there was a total of 341,000 visitors to the country of Belize. On average, per month, 22,331 were sitting down at their computers or on their phones, typing in something related to wanting to look at Belize real estate opportunities. This means that 15.3% of all overnight visitors to the country are looking at real estate opportunities. That's huge. You don't do this when you when you go on to vacation in California. If you're going to Disney World in Orlando, or if you're going to South Beach in Miami, you never type in Miami Beach real estate unless you have an interest of buying in there. Belize is one of the only countries in the world that has this ratio of overnight guests to people looking for Belize opportunities. And actually, this number is much higher than 15.3% because it does not take into account those who are already investigating on social media, on YouTube, and on other platforms such as this. So again, we might ask the question, why is this important? Well, again, it's a numbers game. More tourist, more exposure, 
more interested buyers, less inventory, and we see appreciation in current property values and the opening up of new areas as, the, as it meets the demand. Now, number three, going to go on to a very interesting and somewhat controversial subject, depending on who you ask, the proposed international airport on Ambergris Key. Now, this has been talked about for many months, in fact, for many years, and island locals may get tired of uh, hearing about the possibility. But actually, just last week, uh, they, they took the step of signing the Memorandum of Understanding. This happened on Tuesday, December 12th in the city of, of uh, Belmopan, the capital of Belize. And this is to get the project, uh, the framework of the project defined and lay the groundwork for getting it underway. This project is expected to cost about uh, 100 to 110 million U.S. dollars. And this is the first step needed so that the, be the beginning of the building of this new international airport can take place. Now, whether or not this specific MOU will be the one to carry out the work, it does show a very strong interest by the government of Belize to have an international airport on Ambergris Key. They want the construction to begin in early 2019. Will that happen? We don't know. But we see an ongoing interest and this interest is needed for various reasons. I'm going to show you a couple of things why. First of all, not having an international airport on an island the size of Ambergris Key is holding back tourism and development. Now here is why. On this slide, you see the various cities that fly direct from the United States to Belize. So you have Los Angeles, Houston, Dallas, Charlotte, Atlanta, Chicago, Newark, Miami. Also now we could add to this various cities in Canada. We have direct flights from Toronto, direct flights from Calgary. So all of these flights come in not to Ambergris Key, but to the international airport located in Ladyville, which is on the mainland of the Belize. So all these tourists come into Ladyville, they land, go through customs and immigration, and then 25% of them, as we've seen in our previous slides, they all need to make their way out to San Pedro or Ambergris Key. So how do they get there? Well, some of them take Tropic Air, Maya Island Air. These are 14 passenger seat caravans, and they run back and forth to the island just as quickly as they can. But imagine we have thousands of people going to the island and you're shuttling them by 14 passengers at a time. Or they can take a water taxi. Not many do because the water taxi takes an hour and a half. Sometimes the waters can be a bit rough. People get a little bit seasick. But anyway, everybody has to go that 40 miles to San Pedro town. So what this results in is when they land in San Pedro town, and remember San Pedro town is a very small town that was laid out 100 years ago, back before there were any cars, golf carts, bicycles on the island it was just a little fishing village. So the roads are narrow. The infrastructure is extremely small. And what we see now is a crowding of downtown San Pedro, so much so that people are complaining. There's traffic backups constantly. And so as a way to eliminate this and to drive uh, infrastructure and development north where the majority of the island lies, uh, we, they plan on putting this international airport about 13 miles north of San Pedro town in this area where it would not be a noise hazard to most of the island's inhabitants. And it would offer the opportunity for further development to take place up by Rocky Point, up by um, uh, other resorts that are currently being built and offer easier access to the west side through that east-west Mata Grande road. Now, the Honorable Dean Barrow, Prime Minister, said with this, with this uh, proposed international airport, we expect a phenomenal new opening up, a veritable tourism explosion in Emirates Key, which is, of course, already our market leader. So again, will this become a reality? Uh, will it go under construction a year from now, two years from now, three years from now? We don't know. But when we look at other islands, the similar size, that have international airports, such as the Caymans, the St. John, St. Thomas, we see that having one greatly contributes to the ease of flow of tourism and, and owners coming and going. And it uh, allows uh, for a lot more money, a lot more capital to come into Ambergris Key without having to flow through the international airport. Now, number four, the new development of Key Chapel. Why is this so exciting? Well, this is fantastic because 
I just grab a drink of water here. This is exciting because let's see here on December 7th, Thursday, December 7th, the Key Chapel Development Group turned in their EIA or their environmental impact assessment, which is basically like their plans for development of the island to the government of Belize to have the, the project looked at by the Environmental uh, Research Institute and to see whether or not their project would be viable and accepted. Now, this is a beautiful project. Uh, for those of you not familiar with Key Chapel, Key Chapel is an island just about uh, a seven minute flight from Ambergris Key to the south. So when you look at Google Earth, Earth, you have Ambergris Key in the north, then the island of Key Calker, and then immediately south you have Key Chapel. This is what the island looked like a few years ago. You see it's a beautiful 18-hole golf course. It has just a few villas there on the uh, on the east side shores facing the reef. Then you have a little marina, you have a clubhouse, some infrastructure. But uh, after the 2008 sort of went dormant, so not a lot has been happening in the island. Well, just a few years ago, a large investment group out of Mexico purchased it, and they plan to uh, just roll out this fantastic new mega development. Uh, it's going to cost $250 million. It's going to be a five-star resort being built over the next four years, and what this will give us is a true world-class golf destination in the country of Belize. A pro golfer, Greg Norman, has been taken on to trademark the Key Chapel Golf Course. So, of course, that name recognition brings a, a lot with it. But here's some of the details that they included in their EIA so we know what's going on. Uh, first of all, they're going to be building a 100-key a room hotel, which will include 33 overwater structures. Uh, they're going to have 36 houses, which we branded residences, uh, 100 residential homes. They will have condos surrounding the marina, about 45 condo units. And so altogether, they expect with permanent on-island residents and tourism, there'll be about 1,885 people now living on this island, plus about 400 staff, uh, bringing the total to about 2,000 people uh, will be living on this island, very close to Ambergris Key, bringing a lot of attention to this uh, this part of Belize. And it's just a fantastic project. Very, very excited to see it get approved and kicked off. This is an artist's rendition of the south, uh, excuse me, the northern tip of the island, showing where their hotel will go. You see the over overwater structures, the bungalows there. This is just a fantastic aspect that Belize can allow because the waters inside the reef are very calm. We don't get a lot of wave activity. So so you see these a lot in valley or other types of uh, lagoon type area properties around the world. Well, inside the reef on uh, Key Chapel and other select islands are just perfect for these overwater bungalow structures. And in this next slide here, we see the proposed uh, revamped marina area with the private residences, the condos surrounding it. And again, just a, a fantastic, a fantastic development. Well, number five, Blackador Key. This has been in the news. In fact, it's nothing really new, but I want to take a little bit new, uh, newer look at it to see what we can learn. Uh, for many of you, you know that Leonardo DiCaprio bought Blackador Key, a 110-acre island off the west coast of Ambergris Key several years ago. And uh, he wanted to do a development back in 2008, 2009 and brand it as a Four Seasons. But well, we know what happened in 2008. We had the economic crash, the Great Recession set in, and all plans were shelved for the time being. However, uh, that has now changed. Uh, plans are now in the works, and they also submitted their EIA to the Belize government for, for appro approval. This is an aerial picture of his island. This is just off the west coast, again, of Amargus Key. I'm going to show you pictures of exactly where in a little bit. But this is very exciting because of what uh, Leonardo de plans on doing with the island, developing it in a, such a way that it respects the biodiversity of the marine life, both on the island and in the surrounding waters, and the influence he has on the market in Belize in general. As an example, ask yourself, when this is completed and open, with his star power, with his connections, and with bringing so many new eyeballs to this part of the country, what effect will that have on the overall economy of Belize? How is it going to affect tourism? Which areas in particular do you think will see a boom or an increase? 
What does this mean for real estate investors? All good questions. I'm going to answer some of them now. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about celebrity endorsements. All right, so in this slide, you see uh, Beyonce, Jay-Z, LeBron James, Tiger Woods, Catherine Zeta-Jones. All of these have their names associated with big brands and big companies pay these people millions of dollars to endorse and promote their product. Now, why do they do that? Well, because a celebrity is a very well-known person and they often use their fame and notoriety. They use their position to help promote a product or a service. So many actors, actresses, athletes, they may make a large amount of money in salaries doing what they do from movies and getting paid by their sports teams. The endorsements make them millions and in fact billions of dollars. And this is exactly what, uh, in a similar way, Leonardo DiCaprio is going to do for the country of Belize. Now, Belize is not paying him a cent. Uh, places, these, uh, some of these advertisers here, uh, like Coca-Cola, LeBron James uh, is, a, is a promoter of Coca-Cola, State Farm, McDonald's. He recently signed a seven-year deal with Nike for $90 million. Tiger Woods signed a $100 million deal with Nike. Beyonce uh, a multi, uh, uh, fifty million dollar multi year deal with Pepsi. So, all of these are getting paid to bring their name to a product. Leonardo DiCaprio is doing this without being paid. He is endorsing the country of Belize and, by extension, his island. And he has a huge, huge following. For example, look at his Twitter followers. He has 18.9 million Twitter followers. Do you think people are interested in his views, what he says? Do you think they're going to be interested in how he develops this island, keep a close eye on it, and after it's built? Do you think they might be just a few who buy the villas, which are priced at $9 million to $15 million? Exactly. So what this is going to do is bring a lot of attention and eyeballs into this particular part of the country. Now, where is it exactly located? Well, here's a slide. It's a Google Earth slide, crudely marked up. Sorry about that. But on the right hand side, you can see the island of Abergus Key, Belize. You see a red arrow there pointing at the secret beach area. And then you see a subdivision, which I've outlined in red. That is Grand Belizean Estates, Palmyra Woods, a couple others there, like uh, uh, the Ambergris Bay subdivision. And you also see that uh, east-west connection road highlighted. That white arrow there that you see on the right-hand side, uh, that uh, represents the road going north, which will eventually lead to the international airport. Now, if you look up to your upper left, you're going to see a very large island, long and narrow, like a pencil. That is Blackador Key. So you see that is where the uh, the exact location is. Now, Interesting that Belize is a small country, but this 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 point of focus, this pinpoint of focus in Ambergris Bay, these beautiful clear waters, uh, for Leo to give this area so much exposure is fantastic, especially to the island of Ambergris Key that butts up against these waters. Now, look at the littler, the smaller island there, the one that I have marked in bluish purple. That is Cayo Rosario. So this brings us into point number six. What is going on with Cayo Rosario? Well, Cayo Rosario is a 10, 10 acre island just off the coast of Ambergris Key. And they also have submitted their EIA to the government of Belize. And what they plan to do is to build a, a 102 key hotel with 90 over the water bungalows, 12 mangrove bungalows, 15 isla villas, a spa, an island club, a restaurant, a dive shop, a marina. All in all, they plan to be able to uh, uh, accommodate 294 guests and put hundreds of locals to work serv servicing this beautiful new resort. Now you see it there, uh, it's actually composed of two components. Here's a artist re rendering of one of the plans they submitted to the EIA. Now, on the bottom, it says this is conceptual only. The final design may vary. And so they may go with this plan. They may tweak it. They may increase it. They may reduce it, depending on uh, what the government believes comes back with. But this is a very exciting uh, project for us. It's going to be built to a very high level. And again, give us the, the price point of that about $1,000 a night price point, which people often pay for these overwater bungalow type uh, type hotels. 
cells. Now, in addition to that, there's another component to it that's very exciting for us, and that is they also have an on, on site or on the mainland of Ambergris Key Belize a, a support facility. This is a 2.5 acre utility zone, which is going to be able to supply Cairo Rosario with potable water, electricity, telecommunication services, and these things are not yet in this part of the island, but it will benefit from all these things when they get there. So a fantastic opportunity for all your property owners around Ambergris Bay, Grand Belizean Estates, Palmyra Woods, because you will no doubt benefit from the Cairo Rosario project uh, when it's approved and as it gets under construction. So number seven, I've talked about this extensively in past webinars in the past few weeks, the grand opening of the Hilton Curio Collection, Mahogany Bay Village. This is a beautiful new resort that opened up two weeks ago on the south side of Ambergris Key. Uh, having the Hilton Curio brand will bring a lot of attention, a lot more overnight guests, and it's resulting already in a boom of other services and amenities. We see several restaurants, more spas, more gym facilities opening up because of the uh, the branding from Hilton that we are able to achieve uh, on the south side in this beautiful resort property. And then finally, number eight, just briefly, the Wyndham Grand Belize, which is currently being built at Benicia del Caribe. And this is set to open up sometime in 2018. Not sure yet because uh, construction is well underway, but it's a massive project. And uh, we do expect to open up next year sometime. But again, with these two projects, with the Wyndham Grand and the Hilton Curio Collection, they're sort of like a Leo in the, in the sense of brand name recognition, the credibility that they give to a market is just tremendous. The stability they give, they truly are a market driver to a new area. So how does this all tie in with current property owners and current investors and future investors? Well, look at what is happening in this very small part of the country. We have the proposal for a new international airport. When will it happen? We don't know, but the land is there. The governor of Belize is pushing for it, and we know it will happen at some time in the future. A $110 million project. We have Blackador Key, no doubt going to be hundreds of millions of dollars sunk into this part on this little bitty island, bringing huge amounts of credibility and tourism and infrastructure and eyeballs to this part of the island. We have Kyo, um, Kyle Rosario again. A new major development. We have the Wyndham Grand Belize. We have the Hilton Curio. And finally, in our next slide, we show the, um, the location of Key Chapel to Ambergris Key just to the south. So, what does all this mean? Well, remember, we uh, talked briefly at the opening of this webinar about Amazon. All right, so Amazon is going to choose a city in the United States. It's going to be bring massive amounts of capital, infrastructure, secondary jobs, even if in the form of restaurants and cafes. And whatever city gets that is going to benefit because when you put that much economic focus on one area, you're going to see a boom. So when you look at what these things are doing, and will do in the next uh, short period of time, one, two, three years, we're going to see a boom of activity. And this does not include projects where uh, the developers have bought land already, set it aside for a future project, and now are currently working on plans that they will also submit as in, in the form of an EIA to the government for approval, uh, which very well could double or triple the amount of activity going in uh, in this exact area, in this very specific area. For what we're looking at right now, between this and Key Chapel, we see about a $1 billion U.S. influx of capital into the island of Ambergris Key and its surroundings. And remember, Ambergris Key has a total population, including tourists, at any given time of about 25,000 people. So a very small market, a lot of activity going on. So again, anytime this much economic activity is pointed at a single market, there is certainly going to be a lot of opportunity. So what we're gonna talk now is uh, just giving you three options of using real real estate as an investment vehicle and see how you can benefit now 
before the major wave comes of the grand opening of some of these other projects that are currently proposed and currently underway. So option number one, if you're looking for something for pure use and enjoyment, you want the ability to use your own place on the island of Ambrose Key Belize. You want the ability to just uh, show up with your toothbrush in hand, walk into your own condo and enjoy the beautiful surroundings of a well cared for resort, go snorkeling, diving, fishing, be with your family and friends. And when you're not there, have that place rented out to recoup some of the cost of HOA fees, insurances, taxes like that. Maybe put a, put a few dollars in your pocket at the end of the year. I have the perfect property for you. It is a beautiful one bedroom condo at Belizean Shores Resort. This is a picture of the newly renovated pool. Actually, I shouldn't say renovated. I should say new pool because they just had a lot of uh, infrastructure upgraded in this resort. We have a beautiful pool pool now inside. This resort is located right on the eastern shores of Ambergris Key, about three and a half miles north of San Pedro town. Now, this uh, particular condo was just reduced. It was initially offered at 250,000, and now it's reduced to 220,000 US. It's part of the family of Sandy Point Real Estate, uh, Sandy Point Resorts. Uh, this resort uh, family of resorts also manages and owns Cocoa Beach and uh, also the Wyndham Grand Belize. So an owner at Cocoa Beach is free to use the uh, services and amenities at the uh, at the sister places, so the pools, the bars, the restaurants, the access to the tourism sites and things. Uh, so that's a bonus. And for personal use, it just doesn't get any better. And it's also a great bargain. Why do we see it's a great bargain? Because it is an inexpensive or an affordable property in an expensive neighborhood. So that's what makes it really special. This is a one bedroom, one bath, lower level condo. It's absolutely in pristine condition. It gives the ability for you to own something right in between very expensive neighbors. For example, to your south, you have Cocoa Beach. We have real estate there, two bedroom, two bath, oceanfront condo starting at 550 to $600,000. Uh, to the north, we have uh, Venetia. Uh, the Wyndham Grand property with beachfront condos starting at 1.2 million in the back of this. So where this this condo is situated directly on the on the back across the road. I just saw yesterday a one half acre lot came up for sale, just under 400,000 US for just a lot itself, nothing on it. 400,000 half acre. This is the neighborhood that this condo is in. So excellent investment, but these prices will not last long because soon as Venetia is done, prices at uh, Bleasing Shores will absolutely go up because everything else is going up as well. So if you want an affordable property, email me for information about this because I'm absolutely positive it's going to sell before January 1st, just in about a week, week, week to 10 days from now. And uh, I'm going to make sure that happens because I have a huge database. And once they all hear about this, I'm positive it will sell. Number two, option number two, if you're not ready to pull the, the trigger on something substantial like dropping 220000 for a condo, what I might suggest is that you secure your future spot on the island by going into a vacant land investment. And here is what I would suggest you do is look for, again, a bargain property in what will be an expensive neighborhood. And here's what I, what I, want, what I mean by that is you don't want to look for just some cheap property um, in Belize because cheap does not always mean good. It might be cheap for very specific reasons. It might be cheap because it's, it's not a good property or it's an area that's not desirable. But you wanna, what you want to do is look for a cheap or bargain property that is in a good area now that is going to be a better area in the future. So what might make it a better area? Well, things such as new roads going in, opening up new areas, utilities that are not there yet, but that will be at some point in the foreseeable future. As an example, we took a look at the secret beach area. There's a good, strong possibility that that area is going to receive electric in the near future because of the development that's going on there and in other areas just off its shore. So what we want to look for are areas like that where people are noticing the beauty, they're able to experience the area in some way, shape or form. And remember what we found on the island of Ambergris Key Belize is where people stay and where they experience memorable moments, 
uh, making uh, memories with their loved ones and family, that's often where they end up buying and investing. So what we want to do as real estate investors and property buyers is look for distressed properties or sellers that want or need to sell and are willing to take a discount in order to move the property quickly. One of these properties is located, uh, an excellent idea or an excellent ex idea, <laughs> sorry about that, an excellent example of this a, a property meeting this criteria is lot number 491, which is located just one block north of Secret Beach. And I'm going to show you some pictures here in a minute of Secret Beach. This is located on the west side of Ambergris Key, overlooking Cairo Rosario and Blackador Key. There is a good uh, amount of reason to believe that this area is going to get road and infrastructure in the form of utilities sooner rather than later. This is lot number 490. Here is the plot map showing the exact size and location of this lot. Here is the view standing on the lot looking out toward Cairo Rosario and Blackador Key. You see the beautiful crystal clear waters of Ambergris Bay. Here is a view looking at the lot itself. You see it's nice and high. It's got beautiful palm trees on it. It doesn't need much uh, fill or infrastructure needed to uh, in order for you to build on it. And here is the lot right next door. I know this area well because these are clients of mine, Bruce and Karen Pfeiffer. They purchased lot 491. You can see them there in the water. I took them up to see their property. Beautiful couple. And these will be your neighbors if you purchase lot number 490 immediately next to them. Now, what are the specifics? Well, this lot has fee simple title, so you get full ownership. It does not have any liens or encumbrances. The measurements are 50 feet of beachfront by 88 feet deep. It's zoned multi-use, so you can build residential on it or a combination residential commercial. And it's absolutely in that path of progress, which I'm known for preaching about because it's an area that has a good uh, reason to appreciate in the very near future because of what is being built in and around it and what the uh, what the future holds for this area. So the price is 185,000 US, one of the most uh, least expensive beachfront properties anywhere on Amherst Key today. You don't believe me? Just Google it. Look at all the websites. Look at Remax Century 21. Look at Cowell Banker. Look at them all. You will very rarely find a beachfront property with this type of access in this type of area for anything less than 185,000 US. Now, if you're not familiar with this area, here's a few businesses that are already opened one block from this lot. We have Secret Paradise Beach Bar and Grill. Here's an aerial shot of it. It's a very popular uh, bar and grill with expats, locals, and tourists who come here to spend the day, spend the afternoon, uh, enjoying the sunset, swimming in the beautiful waters, jet skiing, uh, snorkeling, just enjoying these, these uh, pristine waters of Ambergris Bay. And uh, just a, a nice, nice area uh, to be and to invest in. Option number three, my third and final property before we go on to the Q&A, is you have the opportunity to invest in your own private island. And again, it is in this exact area where the path of progress is taking place. Here, let's go to our Google Earth marked up map. We see Blackador Key there in yellow, Kyle Rosario in blue. Secret Beach, uh, pointing to the arrow pointing to it there in red. And then we have this 3.69 acre island with this beautiful sandbar stretching out north and south of it. You can see there I'm pointing at it with a red arrow. Hopefully you can see that on your screens. This is an island that is perfect for commercial or residential development. Again, it's 3.69 acres. It's in the path of progress. And the price is 1.6 million US. So it's at under market value. This is one of those sellers that prefers to have the money to go and do something else rather than pricing it at 2.5 or 3 million, which he could obviously get here in the next 12 to 18 months if he chose to hang on to it for a bit and market it. Uh, he's willing to take 1.6. And here is how I see this being a tremendous deal for someone. First of all, let's take a look at a few more Google Earth slides. We see uh, the Ambergris Bay, the Grand Belizean Estate subdivisions there, Secret Beach, Cairo Rosario off the uh, coast to the um, to the left there, off the west, and then up top, uh, upper right, the private island for sale for one point six million dollars. Here is another Google Earth shot, again zoomed in a bit. 
You see Kyle Rosario, Lisa's Point, parcel number 9062, which is sold already. Congratulations to the investor who bought that recently. That was a fantastic buy. And we see that private island there for sale with the sandbar for $1.6 million. Here is a, uh, an actual shot of it. Uh, so we see the island off there in the distance. Uh, just a fantastic place. Look at those crystal clear waters. There's uh, tons of reef fishing, bone fishing. There is no more beautiful place in the country, I can attest, than this area right where this island is located. So here's an idea for you. If you have six owners who can all go in on this island together, it's a 3.69 acre island, each person could get their own one half acre of beachfront. Uh, the land would end up costing them only 266,000 per lot. They could actually have it subdivided if they want, or they could do shares in a corporation, whatever makes sense to them. If they had a budget of $400,000 per home and another budget of fifty to $100,000 per owner for their own peer, infrastructure, caretaker's home, uh, furnishings such as this, to have their own private home on their own private island, each of the six owners would pony up between seven and 800,000 US dollars. Now, again, if you go on all the real estate websites, and I don't care which one you go to, and you look at true beachfront homes, they start at six to 700,000 US. There is nothing under that price. Most of them are 900, 1 million, 1.5 million and up for a completed home, let alone something that has its own private island. So I think this is really a good deal. And as a further idea, I would turn it into a mini Kyle Espanto. For those of you who don't know, after this webinar, go to this website, www.aprivateisland.com. Kyle Rosario is a fantastic luxury resort built by Jeff Graham. And uh, Jeff is actually partners, Leonardo DiCaprio and Blackador Key. So he's had tremendous success in owning and operating this resort just off the southern coast of Amargus Key. And what Armando Graniel, the builder, did, he was hired to build these uh, these structures, these six individual homes on the island, as he built them with a very cool Key West type feel. They're built out of all local Belizean hardwoods. They have an incredible fit, fit and finish, a very uh, rustic feel to them, but uh, fantastic views. You feel like a millionaire just stepping into one. And here's the uh, interior view of one of the villas, just a fantastic uh, setting. And so you could have Graniel build something similar like this uh, on this island, the, the island for 1.6, and you can market it as a high-end rental. Now, what I did just today is I looked at the bookings for Kyle Rosario for February of 2018. And you can see here that uh, they are pretty much sold out and what is remaining, uh, take a look at the nightly rates. Uh, so you have uh, the cheapest here is 1,795 per night. Uh, and the most expensive is what, about 200 or 2,095 per night. So these are the typical rates that Kyle Espanto gets for being able to stay on a private island with only six residents. You could buy this uh, other island that I just showed you and you can open up something similar. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity for the right person. And uh, let me know if you want more information, more details, and we can go through them. So I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. Uh, if you're ready to take the next steps, or if you have questions, email me at DennisKII at gmail.com. I'd be happy to provide you more information. So uh, we have about a few minutes left. And I'm going to just grab a, a drink of water. And as I do, if you have questions for me, I'm going to take questions for about, oh, the next uh, eight to 10 minutes uh, from my viewers here and uh, see what, um, what kind of questions you have regarding the information I gave you today or other things that have come to mind as you watch this presentation. So I will uh, give you a minute to do that. Think about your questions. Go ahead, just type your questions in the question box. And as you do that, I'm going to put up one more poll just so I can launch that and take a drink and give my voice a break. This is a poll that I also use to know how to tailor my webinars. And it's a simple question. Have you been to Ambergris Key before? 
And if you would, just answer uh, one or more of these. I just have four options here. Uh, no, you haven't, but you're planning a trip down. If so, I'll make some recommendations. Uh, if you have been and like it, uh, that's why you're on this webinar, learning more about the opportunities here. Let me know that. Let me know if you're serious about owning some type of property. You know, and not everybody is. And I can appreciate that. We're all at different levels of our ability to purchase offshore real estate. But if you're serious, check that box. I might be able to uh, Skype with you later today, uh, tomorrow, or maybe early next week. Uh, and if it doesn't seem like it's for you, uh, then uh, just check that box. I appreciate that as well. I remember I had dinner one time with Tom Hopkins, uh, world-renowned uh, best-selling author and sales trainer. And he was talking to me about Belize Real Estate. He says, one thing, Dennis, you have to tell your audiences on these webinars is that if Belize isn't for them, tell them it's not a problem. It doesn't have to be. Don't try to talk them into it. It's not for everybody, but for those who it is, you really want to focus on those. And I take his advice and uh, I run with it. So please just uh, pull that and then uh, and then I'll close that out and we'll get on with the Q&A. All right, so let's go for your questions. I'm seeing several pop up, so we appreciate that. One question here is uh, how much does it cost to build on Ambergris Key, and uh, what are the what is the permitting like and the utilities? Okay, good. So basic question is how much does it cost to build? Build costs vary greatly, as you can imagine. Uh, the lowest cost uh, to build and what we found is the Belizean hardwood options uh, so this is usually made out of mahogany or hard pine or other uh, hardwoods found uh, on the mainland of Belize locally harvested uh, from uh, jungles using good uh, good farming or um, good um, not farming forestry practices and so they ship the lumber to the island and they build a home on site or in some cases they actually build a smaller bungalow style house on the mainland have it shipped over by barge and so you could have a completed home a two bedroom smaller completed home built and installed on a property on the island for around seventy thousand dollars and that would include a solar for power if there's not electric there already and a septic system and your uh, reverse osmosis system and furnishings and things like that. So for about 70000 if you want to get a little fancier, you can go up to between one hundred and one hundred twenty-five thousand for such a house. Concrete, I find prices vary depending on the builder and depending on the fit and finish. Simple concrete houses can be had for around one hundred fifty dollars a square foot, whereas uh, more expensive finishes, if you want expensive tile, granite countertops, uh, double pane hurricane proof windows, you're looking probably upwards of 200 to $215 US uh, per square foot. So there's some information on that. If you want more information, I have a PDF uh, regarding what to do when you're ready to build and I can send you the information. So another question here is regarding uh, closing costs. What are closing costs in stamp tax like now? Well, we've had a revision in those two things in our closing cost and stamp duty. Uh, closing costs typically run one, uh, one and a half to two percent of the purchase price of a property, and stamp tax was five percent of the purchase price. It is now 8% for foreigners buying property in Belize. Now, let me just kind of go through some numbers with you on that. Some real estate professionals feel that this is going to hurt those, uh, hurt the market of those interested in buying in Belize. And personally, uh, I don't agree with that assessment. I think if a person is purchasing a uh, four, five, six hundred thousand dollar condo or beachfront home, or even if they're purchasing a, a fifty thousand dollar a piece of vacant land close to the beach, or in this case a private island for one point six, usually they would be paying five percent in stamp tax to the government. So five thousand dollars on a hundred thousand dollar purchase. If they have to pay now an extra three thousand dollars in the grand scheme of things, what is that? I mean come on, that's uh that's maybe a, a couple flights up and back for three or four people to Belize uh, once a year as a one-time payment. So I honestly don't think that's going to hurt us at all. What that does allow the Belize government to do, though, is benefit everybody by keeping property taxes low. So instead of creating a revenue stream by taxing uh, property taxes, which is paid year after year after year, they simply increase the stamp duty 
by 3%. It's a one-time fee. You pay it. It's over and done. And then you get all the other benefits from owning property in Belize, including no capital gains taxes. So if you buy a property for 100000 in Belize, you sell it for 200000 There's no capital gains taxes. Other taxes are very low in Belize. So I'm telling my clients, my investors, do not worry about this slight bump in stamp tax. It's really insignificant in the, in the big picture and in the big scheme of things. So we have another question here. Let's take it. Uh, this question is from Randy. Where do you see Secret Beach area like three to five years from now in regards to a beach bar and grill? This is fantastic, Randy. I can tell you with 100% certainty we are going to see a massive amount of activity in Secret Beach and the entire uh, coast in this, in this area of Ambergris Bay. And here's why. I have never seen real estate start to move like I have in the past six months in this area. We, we just have people buying, not only buying to, to hold as an investment, but buying to build on private homes, small businesses. We have a good reason to believe that infrastructure is going to be making its way over in the form of electricity. Once electricity gets there, we're going to see a, see a big spark of activity. But here's the deal right now to give you a little tip. If you go to Secret Beach on any given day, morning, noon, and night, doesn't matter if it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or on the weekend, you are going to see that little area packed full of tourists doing all sorts of things, playing volleyball in the water, eating, drinking, bringing their kids to swim, kayaking. In fact, Will Mitchell, who just had a, a house, a small house installed on one of his lots in Grand Valencian Estates, he just opened up yesterday small kiosks that are, that are for rent. So people can get in there easily. And one guy just rented a kiosk from him in order to do these, these self-powered wakeboards. So these uh, wakeboards that you don't need uh, a jet ski or a boat to pull you behind. And um, so now there's a guy renting those off the coast. But really, so many people, and I'm excited about this, because so many people are now able to experience the west side when they never were before. I remember before this road opened up, just about three or four years ago, very few people knew that Amber's Key had a west side. They never experienced it. They never went there. They never saw the sunsets. They never swam the waters. All of that is now changing. And even a lot of the tour companies who never went to the backside of the island are visiting there. Sea Deuced. Uh, type in this. Sea uh, Deuced. S-E-A-D-U-C-E-D. Sea Deuce by Belize is a tour company, one of my favorite tour companies. They do a catamaran trips to the whole Tamarine uh, Reserve in Shark Ray Alley. They go to Key Calker. They do fantastic snorkeling trips. They are now visiting the waters of Ambergris Cay by a converted houseboat and it's interesting because now they are exposing more and more people to the side of the island. So I think that a beach bar and grill would do fantastic. And I highly recommend that anybody looking at opening up businesses that cater to a tourist are going to do very, very well here in this part of the island. So appreciate the question and I hope that answers it for you. So we have uh, more questions here. I'll take them as time permits. It is uh, just about three minutes to one. I like to keep these webinars uh, at an hour or uh, or less. So I'm willing to take one or two more before we uh, before we log off. All right. Anybody with anything specific? I see a couple questions coming up that are more uh, that require longer answers that I have to give now. Uh, one question is: Do I offer any on-island real estate tours? Uh, there are several individuals and companies that do that, depending on your needs, because. Each of the uh, individuals and companies giving on island tours usually have some type of agenda that they're promoting, and rightly so, because their expertise. Uh, they have an expertise in a particular field. So, for example, the Hilton Curio Collection Hotel, Mahogany Bay Village, their sales team are doing uh, on-island tours. It's a multi-day uh, real estate experience. I'm not involved with them at all per se. I don't work for them. I don't represent them. But if you think that you are a good fit 
for buying something in that resort property, then email me more information. Or email me your, your statistics, your, uh, your goals regarding the Belize. If you're a good fit, I can recommend you going on that real estate discovery tour because not only will you learn a lot about that resort project, but also a lot of other things that they're doing uh, on the island of Ambergris Key Belize and how they're impacting the market. So it's a really good study, uh, a look at the market on Ambergris Key. If you're not a good fit for that, there are other individuals and companies who are doing real estate tours extensively. I don't personally, I do most of my sales and marketing over the internet with webinars and things like that. In fact, 90% of all my my clients purchase property sight unseen over the internet just based on my reputation, what I have done in Belize, uh, my, my track record, and by me providing enough videos, pictures, information, statistics for people to make an educated buying decision. So that's where I stand on that. Well, guys, it is uh, two o'clock Eastern time on the dot. So I'd like to wel or, uh, welcome you. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you to enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much for attending today. And again, if you have any questions, if you'd like more information on any of the three properties that we highlighted today, or if you're not in the market for those, but you want to see something similar or different, or you have a different uh, set of requirements, let me know what those are. I'm sure we can help you to make a good buying decision. And remember, Remember all those key factors, those eight things we discussed. When this much economic activity is focused on one part of the world, we are bound to see some excellent real estate opportunities. That's what we're seeing, and we're very excited to share these with you. This is Dennis Kay with Belize Islands Real Estate, and we'd like to thank all of you for attending. Have a great day, and hope to chat with you soon. Cheers.